In this video, we're building a clean header with a smooth animated slide-in menu in Divi 5. What makes this different is that the entire slide-in lives inside a canvas, not in the page itself. Divi 5 canvases let us design off-canvas elements in their own workspace, keeping everything modular and clean. By the end of this video, you'll be able to build your own slide-ins and populate them with any content you like. Before we start building the header with a slide-in menu, I'm going to create a new page. You don't have to do this, but I'm working from my demo website, which is part of my free Divi 5 course. If you're interested, you can join the course. I'll leave a link in the description. Now that the page is created, I'll go to Divi and then to the theme builder. Because this is the demo website, I'm creating a separate template just for this page. If you want to use this header with the slide-in menu across your entire site, you would use the global header instead. I'll create a new template, assign it to the page I just created, remove the global header, and then choose to build a custom header from scratch. I'll start by adding a new row and choosing a one-column layout. Inside the column, I place an image module and upload my logo. Under link, I add a forward slash so the logo links back to the home page. Below that, I add an icon module and choose the hamburger icon. I set the icon color to black and the size to 32 pixels. Next, I open the row settings, go to the content tab, and open the column settings. Under the Design tab, in Layout, I set the layout direction to Row, justify content to Space Between, and align items to Center. Then I set the top and bottom padding of the section to 15 pixels. I'll also quickly open the row settings under Sizing. You'll notice my default width is set to 95% and the max width to 1280 pixels. These are custom defaults I've set for this demo website, so you may need to adjust these on your own site. Let's see how this looks on the front end. I'll save the header and save the theme builder changes. I'll open the page this template is assigned to. There's no content here yet, so I'll quickly import the home page layout so we can better see the header in context. And there it is, a very basic header. Now we're ready to create the slide-in menu, so let's head back to the theme builder. In the top left corner, you can see that the main canvas is currently active. From here, we can add a new canvas. I'll give it a name and click Add Canvas. This creates a new workspace where we can build the slide-in menu. Inside this canvas, I'll add a new section with a one-column layout. I'll open the section settings and start with the background. I set the background color to black with 65% opacity. Under sizing, I set the height to 100 VH. Under spacing, I add 20 pixels of padding on all sides. In the Advanced tab, I set the position to Fixed and the Offset Origin to Top Right. For the Z Index, I'll set it to 6 nines. Still in Advanced, under Attributes, I add a CSS class and name it Slide In Menu. Next, I open the Row Settings. I add a greenish gradient background. and set the gradient direction and length to 135. Under sizing, I set the width to 300 pixels and the max width to 100%. I also set the height to 100% and align the row to the right. Under spacing, I add 25 pixels of padding all around and set the border radius to 12 pixels. This gives us the main structure of the slide-in menu. I'll save this and switch back to the main canvas. 
Now we'll add the interaction that shows the slide in. I open the hamburger icon module, go to the advanced tab and add a click interaction. Under target module, you'll now see both canvases available. I select the section inside the slide in canvas. Let's save and take a look. You'll notice that the slide in is visible as soon as the page loads, so we need to hide it initially. Back in the icons interactions, I add another interaction and choose load. For the effect action, I select hide element and target the slide in section again. I'll save and check the front end. Now, when we click the hamburger icon, the slide in appears but we still need a way to close it. I'll switch back to the slide in canvas and add an icon module. I choose a close icon, set the color to white, the size to 30 pixels, align it to the right, and add a bottom margin of 30 pixels. I then add a click interaction to this icon and target the slide in section. After saving and checking again, we can now open and close the slide in menu. At the moment, there's no animation, so next, we'll add that. Now let's add the animation. I'll open the section settings and go to Animations. I choose a fade animation and set the duration to 300 milliseconds. Next, I open the row settings and set the animation to slide. I set the direction to left, the duration to 200 milliseconds, and the delay to 200 milliseconds. I'll set the animation intensity to 55 and the starting opacity to 100%. Let's save and check this on the front end. When we open the slide in, you can see that the background section fades in first while the menu panel slides in from the right. This gives us a clean, layered animation and completes the main structure of the slide in. From here, you can populate it with any content you like. Let's go back and finish it off. Now let's populate the slide in with some content. I'll start by adding an image module and uploading my logo. I give it a bottom margin of 25 pixels. Below that, I add a text module for the first menu link. For now, I'll use a number sign as the module link, but you can link this to any page. I set the text color to white and the font style to uppercase. I add 10 pixels of padding to the top and bottom. I also add a top and bottom border of 1 pixel using white with 12% opacity. I duplicate this text module and remove the top border so the borders don't double up. To remove the extra spacing between items, I open the row settings, go into the column settings, and under layout, set the vertical gap to zero. I then duplicate the text module three more times and update the menu labels. Next, I add a button module below the menu. I set the button text and change the layout to block. I set a background color. Remove the border. Use a dark text color and set the font weight to bold. The text size is 17 pixels, with 2 pixels of letter spacing. 
and I disable the button icon. Under spacing, I set 8 pixels of top and bottom padding, and 10 pixels left and right. I want the button to span the full width, which isn't available as an option here, so I'll add a small piece of CSS in the custom CSS field. I then align the button to the center and add a top margin of 20 pixels. Below the button, I add a group module and place a text module inside it for the contact heading. I set the font weight to bold, the color to white, and the text size to 18 pixels. I add a bottom border of 1 pixel using white at 12% opacity and give it 10 pixels of bottom margin and padding. Under that, I add another text module for the contact address. I set the color to white at 80% opacity and the text size to 13 pixels. I then open the group module settings, set the vertical gap to zero, and push it to the bottom by setting the top margin to auto and the bottom margin to zero. Let's save and check the front end. And now we have a fully populated slide-in menu. Let's quickly check the responsiveness. Everything looks good, but on mobile, I want the slide-in to be full width. I open the row settings, go to sizing, switch to the mobile tab, and set the width to 100%. After refreshing one more time, you can see that on mobile, the slide-in now spans the full width of the screen. And that's it for this video. We've built a clean header with a fully animated slide-in menu using Divi 5 canvases. This setup is completely modular, so you can reuse it, customize it, and populate it with any content you need. If you want to learn more about Divi 5, including how this demo site is built, you can join my free Divi 5 course. You'll find the link in the description. In the next video, we'll continue working with canvases and build another practical use case. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.